Hi and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a drip painting and I have my squirt bottles. I get these from beauty supply stores. I also have yogurt cups that I've filled with uh, diluted paint. You know, I just mixed, I just thinned it out with some water so it'd be more pourable. But now before we start dripping on this canvas, first of all, I'd like to point out, this is what I call, well, I started to say a failed painting, but it's really not a failed painting. It's just a painting that hasn't quite found itself yet. Okay. So it's a canvas that I'd been working on. I was going in one direction and it just got away from me and I didn't like what was happening. So I, uh, I put a thin, a thin veil of gesso over it. I just thinned out some white gesso and painted over the whole thing. And so the colors are pretty muted now and they're neutralized and it still gives me a lot of background to work off of. There's a great deal of texture on this canvas and as we're pouring the paints and dripping the paints today, that texture that's on the canvas already will interact with those drips and we'll be able to utilize that in our process. So if you don't have an old painting yet, if you haven't uh, painted a bunch of paintings and not like about half of them, well, then you could start with a fresh canvas. I would suggest if you do that to go ahead and just paint some random marks over the entire canvas uh, with some thick paint, maybe some gesso, some rather neutral colors. You don't want anything too bright or um, too intense to start with. So, you know, some grays and, and browns and stuff, light browns and lighter colors and, you know, maybe some light blues. And, um, and just go ahead and cover your whole canvas randomly, make some marks, just have some fun. Then uh, after it's dry, then you can move on to this step. So here we are at this step. And before we start dripping, I'm going to go ahead and create some more marks and shapes on here. I'm going to do that with some of my black paint. I just have a tube of black paint here that's actually has gotten kind of dirty. It may, look, it may be more gray at this point, but I'm just going to squeeze it out on here. Keep it in mind, our, our tic-tac-toe uh, motif, and just maybe bring it like that. So, it just breaks it up a little bit to get things started. I'll set this aside. And I'm actually going to scrape into this. So it kind of so I'm spreading the black paint out. But it's still pretty random. I got my squirt bottle here. Always have a bottle of water that you can squirt wet down, keep your paints wet. And uh, this one may have seen better days. Well, hopefully it'll work. So we, we really want to get the whole canvas wet, a little bit at least. Now, for you at home, this is a, an old garage that I'm working in. And I don't care about the floor. Someday I'll show you a photograph of the floor over here. And it's just covered in, in paint. There went some more. And I don't care. But if you don't have a space like this, you may want to do it outside. Or somehow collect the paint that drips off. So that you don't make a, just a, a big mess. This is a very, very messy process. You're going to get paint everywhere. But that's what makes it so fun. So again, 
things. Okay. All right. And then we'll just start picking some colors. I think I'll go with these purple notes for it. Start creating some lines. And I might skip a space here and then bring it back in. Like that. Here's some darker purple we have. Maybe I can reach, well, with this other hand I can. We'll put that, just let that bleed into the purple that's already there. You can also, with the squirt bottle, you can also run some lines up. They don't have to go all the way. Now I've thinned out some gesso, and we're going to be using lots and lots of that. I just buy it by the gallon, and this was uh, Liquitex Basic Acrylic Gesso. And it's one of the least expensive, it's, it's not the least expensive, I guess it's a medium priced gesso, but it performs for me better than even the expensive ones. So I've got some here I've thinned out. This may not be thin enough. And like I said, we're going to be using a great deal of this. Because we'll just keep adding more. See, I just threw some up there. Now, if I, if I put this right here, see, that would be, like, too balanced. You don't, So, maybe... Well, we're not even close to through, so it doesn't matter too much what we do at this point. And we want to keep... Keep the canvas wet, get it wet, get everything flowing. You want all these paints to merge together and flow into one another. I've had a lot of success with these drip paintings now. They, you end up wasting a lot of paint. So, that's just something you have to live with. Okay, so now I have some yellow. Yellow is, is a complement, is the complementary color to the purples. So, then I'll add some contrast and Now notice I, I put a great deal more on this side than this side. You don't want I like to avoid an all-over design, kind of. I mean, in a way, this could be considered an all-over design. But because I edit and control where the drips are going, it really isn't. There's some. We're making design decisions as we go along. Now, you may notice as I spray this water into this paint, the paint will actually spread out, not just down, it won't just flow down, but it spreads out across the canvas in a gradated form. Okay, so this, it bleeds out from, from the pore sideways 
and creates like a veil effect. And that's what we want. So lots of water, lots and lots of water. Keep everything going. See how it's breaking here across that black and it just creates this visual texture that I really love. There's, I don't know any other way to really get that. This painting's moving along faster than I was expecting. Now see, I want, I want this drip to continue down. So I may I just, sometimes the paint's too thick. Okay, yeah, I like that better. Now it's coming down. And you can take water and just pour it too. Okay, you know what? I think that is a good place to stop and let the painting rest. Um, we probably won't let it completely dry, but we'll give it an hour or two to set up. and. That affects the way the, the subsequent layers interact with this layer. Um, that way we don't lose this entire layer, okay, as we pour more painting, more paint on here. So I'll meet you back in here in just a few minutes.